Hello all, welcome to the Network Pen Testing Series at Pen Tester Academy. Now in this video, we will look at how to create the hijack DLL as part of DLL forwarding basics. So let's jump right in. Now before we begin creating our DLL, <coughs> excuse me, uh, let's look at the export table of a system DLL and try and understand a little bit more about it. So I'm going to go inside C drive windows syswow64. Uh, I'm on a 64-bit system and right now I'm planning to just look at a 32-bit DLL which are all located in this directory and I'm going to use P viewer P view I'm sorry now I can clearly see the export address table in here and now as we spoke about maybe a couple of videos back DLLs basically export different procedures or functions which other code in the program can call and leverage now DLLs export functions either by name or ordinal now what you would actually see is a lot of these functions like activate keyboard layout add clipboard format listener etc are exported by name and you would find that some of them do not have any name uh, which implies they are exported by ordinal what is ordinal well very simply put it's a unique number within the DLL which is assigned for a given procedure so if you look at this column you'll actually find that this value differs for every export and this is basically the ordinal and the first two functions clearly have been exported by the ordinals 05dc and 05dd right fantastic now How does function forwarding work? Well, a lot of times a DLL may not implement the function it is exporting. Rather, that function may reside in another DLL which it can reference. So basically, let's say I have a function ABC. I can say, hey, ABC actually resides in NTDLL. Go pick it up from there. Now, this is a very, very common practice and even system DLLs do function forwarding. So let's go back and if I look at user 32 and keep scrolling down, you'll actually find this, these four entries interesting. Now if you notice this is forwarded name, right? So def DLG proc A is really forwarded to ntdll dot ntdll dialog wnd proc a now ntdll is another dll and basically what user 32 says is hey if you come to me looking for def dlg proc a load up ntdll and access it uh, at the function ntdll dialog wnd proc underscore a right so the format basically is the new dll dot name of the procedure now as you can clearly see the name of the procedure in the new dll might be completely different than the one uh, which is put in in the original dll right there is no compulsion that the names have to match so how does the loader work in this case well it would go ahead first load up user 32 and if the program goes ahead and uses def dlg proc w it would go ahead and load nt dll and it would now know that this is the address to call if this function is referenced so how are we going to orchestrate this dll man in the middle attack Right. How do we put in our proxy DLL in between? So this is what we are going to do. Step one, we are going to take the real user32.dll and go ahead 
and export all the procedures by name or ordinal. Now after that we are going to go ahead and create a proxy DLL and this DLL basically would have an export table in which pretty much all the names of the procedures would be identical to the real DLL. However, these would be forwarding entries which would eventually invoke the right code from the real DLL. Now keep in mind the application will not invoke our proxy DLL automatically and the only way we can do that is rename it as the real DLL. So let's say we want to proxy user32.dll then I'm going to create a new DLL called user32.dll which would contain function forwards to the real user32 which is now going to be renamed to something else, right? So in summary, export all functions by name and or ordinal from the real DLL. Create a def file which is going to be used by the linker to create a new DLL which really is nothing but a function forwarder to the real DLL which has now been renamed to something else. The loader will load our new DLL which is basically nothing but the in-between proxy. And once it goes through the entries, it will load the real DLL, which we have now renamed. So let's go ahead and first create a def file with all the function forwarding entries. Now, if you recall in the last video, we had created DLL export dumb.py in which we just showed all the export information from a given DLL by name and or ordinal. Now what we are going to do is create a def file and this def file will be understood by our linker LD that this basically contains the function forwarders. So what is the format? Well library followed by the library name then we have the export section in which we are going to go ahead and put the forwarders. So let me show you how this is done. Let's first analyze the output. So the DLL to use is user32.dll and of course because we are creating a proxy with the same name uh, the output file eventually for the DLL binary would be the same. Right now, as far as the definition files are concerned, we may always use a different name. But keep in mind that in the function forwarder, the new DLL name needs to be mentioned. So let's call this user32 underscore real uh, dot DLL. Let's do a less so that we can see the output. There we go. So this says, well, the library in question is user32 underscore real. Here is the export section. And if you're trying to go ahead and access activate keyboard layout, then go to user32 underscore real and then pick up the same function. And we've also given the ordinal for more input. And at the very end, of course, you have a couple of exports which are there by ordinal only. Uh, now it was a bit of a pain to figure out the linker options. I have tested it with names. I think the ordinal part works as well, but you can try it out on your own just to verify. Now let's actually put this inside template.def. And now if I open my template.def, here is a beautiful def file which now our linker can use to create the proxy DLL. Now, of course, to create the proxy DLL, we will have to have some DLL template code and all that written. Uh, what we will do is we'll split up this video into two. And I think this is all I had in mind to discuss for this video. In the next video, we will look at how to create our proxy DLL. Uh, using a DLL template code. 
Well, that's all for this video, guys. And if you're enjoying your time at Pen Tester Academy, then please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.